Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video, I'm going to go over a few lines from a Lagalon solo on Green Dolphin Street. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what he's using, how he's playing it, uh, the kind of voicing, so actually his favorite chord voicing probably, and also some interesting arpeggio choices and triad choices that are worthwhile checking out and getting into your playing. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you improvise, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. This solo is coming from a live recording that's actually on YouTube. I think it's from a masterclass in the UK, and he's playing trio with uh, Bill Vinson on saxophone and Orlando Fleming on bass. And as far as I know, it's actually them taking a request from the people at the masterclass. So it's completely unprepared, but it's also really a nice insight into how Lag is playing. Uh, and it's well worth checking out. So check out the entire video as well. This first example is a great example of how you can play some really solid, beautiful lines using some basic material. And of course, this is something that I'm referring to a lot in the latest few videos that I made. And I think it is important that we also start thinking about not really trying to just pick interesting notes, but also work on playing interesting things with the simple and the notes that are anyway always going to be there. So the line is on the 251 in E flat. That's in the second eight bars of the first chorus. So it's on F minor seven, E flat seven to E flat major seven. And on the F minor seven, uh, he's only using three notes and he's using really what sums up to be an A flat major seven shell voicing. So these three notes, so A flat, C and G. And I think what makes this work and what makes it really interesting is that he uses the G a sort of a pedal point that he returns to in between the other notes. So the first part is just first the G, then down to the A flat, and then back up to the G, and then to the C, and then back up to the G, and then he moves on to the B flat seven, and then really just clearly spelling out the changes by playing the D on the one. And after that, we get an inversion of the B flat seven arpeggio, and that's just from F down to down the triad, down to the seventh, A flat, resolving to the third of the E flat major seven, so the G. And then on the E flat major seven, uh, first the arpeggio from the third, so the G minor seven arpeggio, and then up an E flat major uh, seven arpeggio, and then just down the scale. So he's chaining together, a G minor arpeggio and an E flat major seven arpeggio to create that melody. So really simple things, but a very effective line. And because he has this rhythm and he has the G as sort of a pedal point in the beginning, it kind of springs out and that makes it melodically a really strong idea. This example is from the turnaround in the first chorus and here you have a voicing that Lag is using all the time, both in this solo and actually, as far as I can tell, in gen general in his playing. He uses this really a lot, uh, and it's also quite common with players like uh, Gilad uh, Hexelon. So the voicing that he's using, so if we just start with the basic version of that, that's in this case, this voicing, so E flat, F and D. And you can look at that as being just three notes next to each other, so D, E flat and F. It's an incomplete voicing. If you use it like he's using it here, I think it sounds like an E flat major seven with a nine in the context, also because it's placed in the turnaround. So that's kind of what I hear around it. And um, then he's just moving that around. Of course, you can use it as other things. I'll get back to that after I've covered uh, his example. So in this part of the song, it's in the at the end of the chorus, and we just hear this as being an E flat major seven. In the theme, they're actually playing a B major seven to an E seven. And that's also kind of what uh, Orlando Fleming is playing. But what Lager is playing is first E flat, and then going down to the fifth, and then moving the whole thing up to an E major seven, and then down to the fifth again, and then we get this D major seven, and the A, and then again back to E flat. And that's really what he, <clears throat> what he does with it. To me, this sounds like a quote from uh, 
uh, from the I think it's a Michel Legrand song called uh, "Watch What uh, Watch What Happens." So like this, and that's coming out of that. So that is that movement. Uh, you can actually check out Joe Pass has a great recording of this song on his uh, Intercontinental album. Uh, that's well worth checking out if you want to check out that song. That's what the turnaround sounds like. And that's of course a nice way to just throw in some other chords where we're expecting either a turnaround in E flat uh, or we're expecting like they're playing in the, in the theme, this uh, B major seven to E major seven as a turnaround. So we get something else and that's probably what works. And then also just the idea of moving around this voicing, which really makes this example. But of course you can use the voicing as more than just a major seven voicing like I'm thinking about here, because actually it can play, I mean, it's an incomplete voicing, but you can interpret it in different ways. And you can easily see this as being an E flat major seven, but you can also see it as being part of a C minor seven, or maybe as a, as a D, uh, sorry, a B seven altered. So a B seven with a, with a, let's see, so with the third, the flat five and the sharp nine. And we can also think of it as being a D7 with the sharp nine, the flat nine and the root. So there are different, there are a lot of different chords that you can think of these uh, voicings as, and you can use it like that as well. So if, um, if we take a few examples of that, so if I take the, the second two five uh, in the song, so the one that's two G flat, so A flat major seven, D flat seven to G flat major seven, then we can play this as the A flat major seven. We can move up and do this D flat seven altered. So that's a D flat seven altered with a sharp nine and a flat nine, and then resolve that to a G flat major seven. Then you have this. Of course, we're not really concerned with strict voice leading. This is more about using this sound and then trying to hear hear that on top of what harmony we sort of perceive to be there. Another example would be um, to use it on the first turnaround, so the F major, F minor seven, B flat seven to E flat major seven. And that could be something like this. So this F minor seven eleven, B flat seven uh, sharp nine flat five, and then this E flat major seven. So that sounds like this. So it's worthwhile just checking out how you can use this in different places that you can apply it to different chords. You can actually take, like you could take the whole song and then move it around on that. So and just use some of the examples that I went over here. And in that way, use one, vo one voicing to play the entire song. So here's the turnaround played slowly, and then I'll move on to talk a little bit about how Lag is using open voice or spread voice triads uh, and sus triads to create a more modern jazz sounding uh, melodic language. <laughs> The reason that I can keep on making videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. This example is starting off with a spread trial, an open voice trial. It's on the E flat minor seven, or you can also think of that of that as being a G flat major seven over an E flat bass note. And uh, the triad that's being used is an open voiced G flat major triad, so in the first inversion, so with the third as the first note. And he plays that, and then he goes on to play an E flat sus triad, so like this, moving on to uh, just sort of a, well, E flat minor pentatonic fragment, really. And then down to a B, which is maybe a little bit a um, uh, surprising note in, in this context, but uh, that's something I'll return to. Uh, so, and then ending the line on the E flat. And he, he actually sticks with this open voice triad for uh, 
some time and he uses it again on the on the F major and on the E major chord that follows. So the line is really just an, he is using the triad to just create some melodies that still work even though they'll have large intervals. And I think that's one of the nice ways that you can start using these spread voice triads where you have like large larger intervals within the triads and that works really well and that's that's really what he's doing here. So then combining that with the soft sound, which is also really something that we don't really connect with with bebop and it's it's more of a modern jazz sound from well Coltrane and on I guess. Besides the spread triad and the sauce triad that I think is maybe the most important part of this line, then of course we do have this thing in the towards the end where he's using a B. And um there are different ways you can interpret that. It's a little bit difficult to to really get into. It could be anything from a wrong note to an intentional uh, change of the harmony. So you can of course look at it as just being instead of normally you would probably expect the the E flat minor seven here to be sort of a Dorian sound. So so it would be a minor seven chord, but it would have a C in it, not a B. So you can think of it as being an Aeolian sound on the uh, on that chord. I think it's more useful if you think of it as being a conscious choice, at least if you want to use it like that, then think of it as being a B major 7 in this place of the uh, E flat minor 7, because then you get a completely different sound. And, and actually something that works extremely well with the melody also. So you have the... So you have this sort of B major over E flat sound, or over D sharp, if you want to relate it to the chord. And that's definitely something that works well with the melody and it's also worthwhile checking out. And that way you do get some other uh, sounds in there. I think in this case, it's sort of buried in the middle of the line. You don't really get the full effect of it, but that is something you can start working with and try to use both when you're playing the theme and when you're soloing. If you want to check out another guitar player who has some really interesting rhythmical ideas and is playing, then maybe check out this video where I'm analyzing a few lines from a Jim Hall solo on Autumn Leaves. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my lessons, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.